So here's the tutorial. First of all, for those of you who aren't here, I forgot to hit record at the very, very beginning. I apologize. But I told the people that are here questions that I like from the review. Find out who was at the tutorial and ask them which questions that I said I like and you'll have a very good idea of what you're going to see on the written section. I'll also try and repeat myself during this tutorial. Now let's begin. Yes? Is there a using principles of physics question on the test? Yes. One. I, yeah. One on the written and then one multiple choice kind of conceptual one where I give you one of the many, many, many equations that we've dealt with and I say something like, if you tripled the charge and doubled the radius, what would happen to the blah, 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 blah. Okay, something along those lines. We've done those before where, oh, it's seven times stronger. No, it's five times weaker. No, it's three times stronger. We've done those before. I'm trying to be very, very vague on purpose, but something like that, certainly. Okay, uh, electric field diagrams, I've already said. Are there any from the review that you would like me to go over? This is your chance to ask. Savannah, what number? Number, I'm sorry, 20? 28 or 20? Okay, sorry. I'm looking into, I found a wireless adapter for my projector. The problem with sitting here is the fan goes right there. When everyone talks in this area, it's coming through the fan turbulence, and that's why I can't hear also in that area. So I think I'll be able to wander the room next year and teach from wherever I want to, and that'll be way cool. Yes, I'm doing a Math 12 tutorial then, but you can certainly come in still. Number 20. Great question. I think I like this question. Certainly part A. I did say I like this question. Okay. Savannah, what do they want me to find? Seems to me that um, I can't use force times distance because what would be happening to the force as I'm moving closer and closer changing? So I have to use my other definition. We said that work was the change in potential and the change in kinetic. But have they mentioned speeds here at all? Let's assume it end and begin at rest. Okay? And Savannah, what's changing anything? Okay. Now, energy, scalar or vector? Am I putting in the signs, the pluses and minuses, or not? Yes, scalars, signs. And we said this. It's K, Q1, Q2, all over R final. There's my final potential. Minus K, Q1, Q2, over R initial. Now, an electron is negative, and this charge is negative. So when I go negative times negative, you know what I'm going to get over here? Positive. So if you wanted to, you could skip typing that part in on your calculator. It's really, really up to you. Okay? Had you got this far already? Okay, so I'm just going to show you my answer key just for this part, because I suspect you're wondering probably about part B and part C. Um, yep. So I carefully plugged in the numbers. Uh, initial, uh, final distance was 1 meter. You got the initial distance is 1.5 meters, not 0.5 meters, 1.5 meters away. And I got 7.2 times 10 to negative 15 minus 4.8 times 10 to negative 15. I got how much work? 2.4 times 10 to negative 15 joules. Okay? I think what you're wondering about is part B. So let's look at part B. What is the potential difference between point X and point Y? You remember what I said for the answer? It was 2.5 times 10 2.4 times 10 to negative 15 joules. What is the potential difference between point X and point Y? Well, that's going to be the voltage. What mathematical operation does difference suggest? Yeah, I'm going to subtract the two voltages. Okay? It's going to be K big Q over R final minus K big Q over R initial.
Now, right about now, I'm also thinking, though, wait a minute, they made this two marks. Is there another way that I could figure out the voltage? Because that's a lot of typing for two marks. So I paused here. The first time I did this, I wrote this, and I went, hey, wait a minute. We just figured out the work. We just figured out the change in potential energy. And didn't we also say... Didn't we also say that the change in potential energy was equal to... Whoop, right? That's not blatantly on your formula sheet. I think it's in disguise. I think voltage is described as energy per coulomb. Is that, I think, something like that. Yeah. So I quickly rewrote it. Now here's why that's nice. Do I know how much work? Yeah. Do I know the little tiny charge that we're moving? Electron. Ooh, this is going to be way nicer. Let's see if that gets us there. Apparently, the potential difference is going to be 2.4 times 10 to the negative 15 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Now, although voltage is a scalar, what I've sort of said is when I'm using the QV equation, I don't put in the negatives and positives. And I can't give you a great explanation as to why, except I know you just don't. Hey, let's see if that works. It'd be great if it did. 2.4 times 10 to the negative 15 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. 15,000 volts. First of all, that looks like such a nice answer. Such a, such a voltage -y answer, because a lot of our voltages were in the thousands. Is it 15,000? Is that the answer it says at the back? All right, Mr. Duick, you got your answer key right there. Shut up. Okay, fine. So the first time that I did this, I did it the long way. And that's still on my answer key. But I just thought of that today going, wait a minute, for two marks, that's way too much work. I did get 15,000. Now, I wrote plus or minus 15,000 volts. The reason is it depends which direction you're traveling. Are you going from Y or going to X? It just said between X and Y. It didn't say moving from X to Y. No, a lot of them, they take plus or minus. Okay. Uh, C, is there a part C? No? Okay. That is your question, okay? So I actually gave you a better way, I think, to do that. I might change, well, no, I'm not going to change my answer key because that works just fine. But this is nice because I got the same answer. What did I get, 15,000 volts? I get the same answer two different ways. And to me, that second one is a little more elegant. Yep. Sure. Number seven. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to see the numbers? Q1 is the electron. That's the little tiny one that I'm moving. Q2 is the big charge. No. Oh, the top parts are, yeah. Yeah, so on my calculator, I would type this in first. You have, the, you have a graphing calculator, right? I did that, and then I just went second function, enter. I put the, dropped the minus down, and I just changed the 1 to 1 1.5. Right? Same thing, thing as we did in the last unit in the gravitational homework, assuming you did the homework. <clears throat> That's uh, th those graphing calculators are so handy. This in this unit and the previous unit, those because those are about the longest equations you'll be typing in all year. It just saves you time. Sorry, Pat, number seven. Yeah. Gotcha. Did I already say I like number seven or not? I did. So those of you that are listening to this tutorial, apparently I really like number seven. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So those of you that are listening to this tutorial, here is a question you're going to see on your test. I'm going to give you two points and a location, either somewhere between the two points or maybe over here. And I'm going to ask you to find either the electric field or the electric potential 
or both or the potential diff no potential difference is one charge not two charges so uh, quick Pat you asked this question electric potential what's another word for electric potential voltage not energy repeat that again for those of you listening at home voltage not energy so voltage point charges can you go to your formula sheet and can you figure out what the voltage for point charges is for me Pat yep <coughs> So I think we're going to have the voltage from charge 1 is going to be Q1, R1. It's going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th, 7.5 times 10 to the negative 6. Voltage, I put in the sign, so positive all over. Uh, what's its distance from P? See, don't say 0.2, sorry, 0.35. There's a common mistake kids would make. They would just plug in the numbers, right? And when you do that, you get 1.93 times 10 to the 5, well, 19,300. Okay. The voltage from charge 2 is going to be KQ2 over R2. It's going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th. Pat, voltage, scalar or vector? I heard both answers convince me. By the way, I can't remember if I did this with your class. I thought of this later on. If you look at the formula sheet, what block are you, Pat? Block C? I did this, I did this last day with either block B or block C. I can't remember which ones. We noticed that if you look at the formula sheet, all of the vectors are in a row, and all of the scalars are in the same row. If you're looking for yet one more way to keep that. And I think you all do know that energy is a scalar. You've got that one down, Pat, since physics 11. So signs here, no signs here. We decide by either using like charges repel or by which way would a positive charge want to move that could for electric field. Uh, here, it kind of depends, but usually not. Usually no signs. So back to my question, Pat. Voltage scalar or a vector? What did I just show you an easy way to remember on your formula sheet if you can move your calculator and look at your formula sheet? Yeah. So voltage scalar or a vector? Scalar. Put the negative in. You're going to be doing better tomorrow though, right? I hope so too. And you've given them directions, and they don't have any. They do have negative and positive, but not directions. Uh, you get negative. What you get is a magnitude. The total voltage, the electric potential, what they're really saying is the total voltage. Now, this is not the potential difference. Potential difference is between two locations. Final minus initial. Here, they've given us one location. They want the total voltage. When I say total, what mathematical operation does that imply? Adding. So if you add them up, what do I get for an answer? Oh, and you can even see in my notes here, I wrote, not energy, voltage! Uh, 4.3 times 10 to the fourth. 193,000 plus negative 150,000. 4.3 times 10 to the 4th volts. Do you see the slight difference between potential, total, and potential difference, two locations, okay. and voltage, I know, which is sort of both. And <coughs> Excuse me. Any others? Yeah. Oh, oh, just in there. Okay. By the way, those who did the rewrite on circular motion, I emailed the scores out.
Last night at about 10.40. Did better. Everyone did better but one person. Some people did quite better. One person got perfect on the rewrite. 18. Did I say I like number 18? Okay. I might. I didn't give you everyone. Okay. I do like number 18, sort of. On the multiple choice, I'm going to give you charges that aren't in a nice line with each other. Probably not, in fact, not probably. Definitely not as a written. Okay. What are they asking me to find in number 18, Savannah? Scalar or vector? That's actually way easier. You see, if this was a vector, if they were wanting, for example, electric field, which is fair game as a multiple choice question, I'd have to add them tip to tail and do some trig Pythagoras. Okay? By the way, for electric field or for forces, we'll always keep them nice 90 degree angles. But they only want the electric potential. This question here, because voltage is a scalar, it's exactly the same as the one we just did with power. I'm going to go the voltage from charge 1. I'm going to go the voltage from charge 2. And then the total is going to be the voltage from charge 1 plus the voltage from charge 2. That's the beauty of voltage being a scalar, is it doesn't care whether that charge is there or right there. Mathematically, because it's a scalar, same diff. Okay, Not for electric field, vector. Not for force, vector. But for energy and for voltage, yep. Does that make sense? I'll show you my quick work just in case. So total, they want the total voltage, voltage 1 plus voltage 2. Who cares about direction? Voltage is a scalar. Uh, both were positive, so I did put the positives in, but because it's scalar, positive, but didn't make a difference because positive times positive is positive. If they put a negative there, Savannah, I would have had, just like in the last question, one negative voltage. I would have ended up with a smaller answer. That's fine. Okay. That's why voltage is so nice. It's a tricky concept. But mathematically, it's nice. No trig, no nothing. Just conceptually, it's tricky. And yeah, potential, potential difference, voltage. What do they do? I can't change the vocabulary. Yep. Did I say I liked 12? I did? Okay, so those... Oh. Okay. What are we finding then, Dylan? Electric field, vector or scalar. And can you think of a nice, easy way I can tell by looking at my formula sheet, Pat? How do you know? Top row. Okay. Because also, what's the first thing in the top row? You know force is a vector. I'm hoping you got that memorized this year at Physics 11, right? And in the, pardon me? Well, just humor me. And in the bottom row, what's the first thing? Energy. I'm hoping you got energy as a scalar. So now you got and the middle one is the weird ones for plates and things, so we don't quite freak out as much. Okay. Here's how I'm going to do this. This is sending out an electric field, as is this. So I'm going to find the electric field from charge one. I'm going to find the electric field from charge two. And then I'm going to add them vectorially, because they do have direction. Uh, what is the equation for electric field from a point charge? Okay. So it hints. Point charge, you're looking probably for a Q in the equation, right? And whenever we're talking about point charges, what other letter always appears in the equation? Have you noticed? I think, yeah, R. So find something that's got a Q and R, and what's the symbol for electric field? Do you have a formula sheet in front of you? Okay. I'll give you a hint also because it's a vector. You should be looking top row. Yep. So E1 is going to be KQ1 over R1 squared. 
9 times 10 to the 9th, 7.5 times 10 to the negative 6, 0.2 squared. Nine times ten to the ninth times seven point five times ten to the negative six divided by point two squared. And I get one six eight seven five hundred. Is that big? No, electric fields were in the thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands, so okay. And that's a pretty good sized charge. Let me make sure I type this in right though. That looks seven point five times ten to the negative six. So one six eight seven five hundred. One six eight seven five hundred. What are the units for electric field, Dylan? You can find out from the formula sheet by looking at the middle of the top row. See the middle equation in the top row? What does it say? Read it to me. E stands for electric field. Equals what? Okay, don't read me the letters, read me the units. What's F measured in? What's Q measured in? Oh, you're telling me it's newtons per coulomb? Do you see how that's hidden in there? Okay. Direction. We ignore this charge temporarily. We say if we were a tiny positive, positive, positive test charge right there, which way would we want to move if we could because of that guy? East, right, whatever you want to call it. I usually go right and left unless I put a compass on the question. Okay, second one. It's going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th. Charge 2, electric field, scalar or vector? So sine or not? Yeah, Pat? This isn't here. Okay, I'm just to find electric field, we use what we call, the fancy word was, the principle of superposition. And what that really meant is, pretend the, the second charge isn't there, just look at the first charge. It would be pushing to the right. Okay? Because your test charge is always a positive, but a really, really small one. How small? So small it doesn't have its own electric field, because that would change the question. It's imaginary, right? All over. 0.2 squared. Nice thing, Dylan, on my calculator, I can just go second function, enter. Was it 2.5? It was, wasn't it? Yeah. 562,500. 562,500. 562,500. Again, Pat, pretending this charge isn't there temporarily. Sitting right here. Based on that charge, which way would a positive charge want to move if it could? Oh. Oh, and by the way, the units are newtons per coulomb. These are in the same direction, so you know what, Dylan? I'll just add them together. If they were in opposite directions, bigger minus smaller, and the bigger direction is the winner. Okay. And on the multiple choice, I wouldn't feel bad having a point there, having one charge here, so you have to the right and up, and then you would have to add them tip to tail and do some lovely trig to get the final electric field. That's a great multiple choice fair game question, but it'll always be a nice right angle Pythagoras trig, so it's not going to be sine law, cosine law. Okay? There are a couple like that in the review. You're looking terrified. That tells me how far in the review you've gotten so far. Anyways, we're not done yet. Let me finish this question off. It's going to be 1687500 plus 562 500 plus 1687500. Five the total electric field here is 2.25 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. <coughs> Units, Dylan? And I'm not done because it didn't say, what does it say in brackets here? It was, want me to find? And? Oh, which direction? Right. Now ask me your question. What was your question? I think so. Oh, that's your final answer is right there. What, what number was that? 12? There you go. Okay. There's a very, 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 very good chance that you'll see that in the future. Okay. 
27. Ooh, someone's actually done the homework. <coughs> number 7. Number 12. You number 3, Mr. Duke? Number 27, I like. I don't know yet if I like, I like, I like. I mean, I'm just happy to see somebody ask that part. Let's see. Ah! Good question. This is very. This is a nice build to the one that Dylan just asked. You. Dylan had them in a nice straight line. Are these ones in a nice straight line with each other? So this is going to be a little trig. Oh, but you notice it didn't ask for the direction. It just wants the. So we don't have to find theta. Okay. I've seen them do one or the other. Rarely have I seen them do both, on the provincial. In fact, often what I've seen them do is if, if, they, if they want to do a direction thing, they'll just make it rough. They'll have four arrows to pick from and say which arrow best matches the direction. One arrow would go that way, one that way, one that way, and one that way. Okay? That, would, that, that I've seen them do. Make this a little smaller. There we go. Okay. Temporarily ignore that charge. What direction is this electric field exerting right there? Down. Temporarily ignore this charge. We're going to end up adding those two together tip to tail. And we're going to have something like this. That plus that. And then the resultant will be right there. And I'll use Pythagoras. Okay, what will the numbers be? The number for this one is going to be k q1 over r1 squared. The number for this one is going to be k q2 over r2 squared. The nice thing is, I think in this question here, it's a, oh, sorry, this question's a little bit tougher even. You know why? They didn't give me this charge here. What did they give me instead? They gave me this side. They've told me the electric field. How big is the electric field when I add them tip to tail? They've told me. How big is my net electric field? 5,000. Okay. If I crunch this one here, I'll do it really quickly. It's going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th times 4 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 3 squared, 4,000. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think it's going to be the 3, 4, 5 triangle, which we've run into a few times. I think it's going to be 3,000, okay? So the mystery electric field here is 3,000. That's not what we want as our answer. They don't want the electric field. They want the charge. So here's what I know. 3,000 equals k q2 over r2 squared. They want q2. Angela, how would I get q2 by itself? Times by r2 squared and divide by, okay. I'm also kind of leaning towards, because it looks like they picked these numbers really carefully. Since a 4 was right there and it showed up there, I wouldn't be shocked if B is the answer with a 3 there and a 3. But I don't know. I'd have to crunch the numbers. That would be my panic guess. With Mr. Dewick just said I have 30 seconds left. That would be my intelligent guess that I would try and do in a pinch, right? Is it B? I don't even know. What number was that? 27? Yeah, it is B. Pardon me? Why would I have needed to? Oh, no, you were away for some of this. My bad. Why were you away again? Oh, vacation. For vacations, I can't extend test deadlines. It just becomes too awkward. But for illnesses, I would have. Okay. Any others? Um, while we're on the topic, look up. Talking about stuff not in nice right angles, another twist that I've seen is a 
a force where you have a charge here, charge here, charge here. This charge exerts a force down. This charge exerts a force right. What's your overall net force? Add those together tip to tail. I don't think I've ever seen them ask for magnitude and direction. I've seen them ask for direction, or I've seen them ask for magnitude, but never both. But that would be a nice twist as well. You'd need the extra charge here because force requires two charges and two charges. Okay. What else have I seen? Um, twenty. I mean, twenty-eight is good, but we've done some electric potential ones. I think I said I liked number 30 anyways, even though it's a multiple choice. That'd be a good written question, too. Again, make sure you can handle an electric field diagram and translate it, something like number 33. Sure. Okay. So electric field lines, they're symbols of the electric field. They're representations. Okay. The arrows tell you the direction of the electric field. So since electric field always points from positive to negative, that right away tells you that this must be a negative charge because the arrow is pointing towards it. This must be a negative charge. In fact, what we have here are like charges, which is why the electric fields are being repelled from each other. Okay? Compare that with electric field between unlike charges. I think I had one earlier. Near the beginning. Oh, right there. Uh, this would be the electric field between unlike charges because what you're saying is if a charge, if the force line was right here, it would get pulled towards, it would want to go towards the negative. It would, we de decide electric field direction in two ways. Which way would a positive charge want to move if it could? I use that for complicated diagrams. Or from positive to negative, I use that when there's parallel plates or electric field diagrams like that. We also said the number of lines roughly is proportional to the strength of the charge. This charge here has one, two, three, four, five, six lines coming off of it. This has six lines coming onto it. Those two charges are the same polarity, same magnitude, sorry, not polarity, same magnitude. If this charge had 12 lines and this had six lines, I would say this charge is twice as big as that. I don't know what they are, but I know this one's twice as big as that. Okay. This notion of field lines also going to become hugely important when we look at magnetic fields. In fact, I think you guys in science in grade 9 or 10 do the iron shavings around a magnet experiment where you can actually see the field lines quite nicely. That's a nice, nice little experiment. I bought one of those, a three-dimensional one, that I hope to bring out when we do magnetic fields. We'll play with that. I only bought it about three weeks ago, so I don't even know if it works yet. I think it does. But... Any others? Yeah. 39? That's fine. Okay, I'll throw this online, and I'll oh, that's page thirty-nine, Mr. Duke. And I'll try and find, I'll try and email out this. Well, I may email this out. You guys have watched and written, and I didn't do that much today, anyways. It's an easier unit. Okay. Uh, I think I like number thirty-nine. Uh, a variation on it. Okay. So I won't say I like this exactly, exactly, but I have some strong affection for the concepts here. I like to think of them as kind of a, a, you know, a younger son. Okay. What we have here then is this electron has kinetic energy. And when it gets here, this is positive. So is it going to speed up or slow down? Okay, so since I have changing speed and changing distance, I'm solving this with conservation of energy. Are any of these zero? I think once it totally travels through the voltage, it will have used up all of its potential energy. It will, it will have fallen down to the ground, essentially. It's the same concept, except gravity now is sideways. Okay. And they want the impact speed. So let's see. We're going to have a half mv initial squared plus now potential energy between parallel plates. 
That's the middle row. Can you get me the energy by itself in that middle row there, please? Uh, that's voltage and electric field. That's not energy. I know it's an E, but there's no P next to it. Don't get E and EP mixed up, please. In fact, this is the equation that I told you. This is where I write those uh, big V, the big V with the wings, because this is where I have big V voltage, little v velocity. And I know my handwriting, my capital letters don't look very different from my lowercase, so I added the wings. So I had a physics prof teach me that trick. Uh, do the masses cancel? No, because there's no mass in here. In fact, I think what I would start to do is I would probably crunch these numbers, get an answer, and then divide by a half m. Which mass? They didn't give me a mass here. They didn't need to. Why? Oh, are you saying that's on my formula sheet? Okay. And they didn't give me a charge here. Why? Electron. They did give me an initial velocity, so I can find final velocity. So, Jimmy, let me just go to my answer key then, okay? And I'll walk through the rest of it. Okay. My other hint to use energy, you'll notice I drew an arrow pointing to the word speed on the provincial towards the end of the year. I always look for the difference between velocity and speed. If they say the word speed, usually that's deliberate. Usually they want me to take a scalar approach, which is energies. Okay. Um, oh, look at that. I didn't actually crunch the numbers. I divided by one half and by the mass of an electron to get the final squared by itself. But there is my charge on an electron. What voltage difference are we traveling through? 250. Again, be prepared for a diagram where maybe that's 500 and that's 1,000. That's still a voltage increase of 500. So you, know, you might have to do a little bit of math. Not always, but sometimes I throw that in. A half m v squared. Please, 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 please don't forget the squareds. And then divide by a half m. That gives you v final squared. Savannah, what do I have to do at the end? Yeah, and here's how I know. Light speed is 3 times 10 to the 8th. Electrons don't go faster than light. Nothing does. 1.2 times 10 to the 7th meters per second. Next little question. Okay. Any others? 26? See you, see you. Oh, cathode ray. Were you here for the cathode ray tube lesson when I... Were you here for lesson... Because you missed one day, I thought, didn't you? Okay. So the way a cathode ray tube works... Come on. Clip. No worries. Excuse me. The way a cathode ray tube works is you have an accelerating voltage right here. This is really, 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 really negative. This is positive. And you put a very tiny hole right there. What that does is that gets an electron coming out very fast in an enough, almost a straight line. Then you have a deflecting voltage, maybe where this is negative and this is positive. That would deflect the electron downwards because it would want to go towards the positive. Or you could reverse the current, which is what they do in real life on alternating current. They flip the current back and forth. So some electrons will get deflected up, some electrons will get deflected down. Okay? What would cause the greatest deflection? Well, first of all, if I make this voltage here stronger, that would give you a bigger deflection here. And if I make this voltage here weaker, because if this is weaker, it's traveling slower. That means it's between the plates for longer. It'll get deflected more. If this is stronger, it's going through the plates so fast it hardly gets deflected at all. If it's slower, 
gets deflected more. Does that make sense? Okay. We're actually going to revisit the cathode ray tube because I actually, initially they ran it with plates, but they really run it with solenoids and magnetic fields. So we'll come back to it two units from now and do it properly. And that's when I'll give you cathode ray tube questions on your test. I don't think that there is a cathode ray tube question on this test. Or if there is, it's only one multiple choice question. Okay. I'd go look at the test, but my screen court recorder is going, and I don't want the people at home to see a copy of the test suddenly. Somewhere Lee is going, oh, I thought he would for sure. No. Any others? Okay. Work, work through the review. You'll find no surprises on the written. You'll find two or three curveball surprises on the multiple choice where you'll be, oh, I did this question, but he's making me go backwards. Okay. Uh, I knew how to find the force. Now he wants me to figure out the radius. Oh, get the R by itself. Get the radius by itself. Or, oh, I know how to find the electric field. Now he wants me to find one of the missing charges. Okay. Um, otherwise, it's a pretty good test. Usually people do, if they keep the equation straight, which is really the only risk, maybe pretty good. It's fairly plug and check -ish. Okay, I'm going to hit stop.